In your exam, you might be asked to draw a weighted and directed graph to illustrate a situation. This video will show you how to do that. In this example, Corey is a student at an adult ed center who rollerblades to various nearby businesses. Because there are hills around his center, it can take him longer to get to a business than it does to get back, or vice versa. The table is presenting you with the school and a list of the nearby businesses, and it gives the time in minutes that it takes to get from one to the other. Not all of the trips are listed, but some of the most common ones are. You're being asked to draw a weighted and directed graph to illustrate this information. The first thing you have to do is you have to examine the situation and realize that you have five locations that are important here. And those five locations have to show as vertices on your graph. I'm starting with the school. I'm putting a vertex named S. And then I need vertices for the cafe, the pizza place, the dollar store, and the burger place. Here I'm putting a B for the burger place. Here I'm putting a D for the dollar store, a P for the pizza place, and a C for the cafe. Now all my vertices are represented. Next, I can see that from the school, Corey rollerblades to all four of the other businesses and he rollerblades from all four of the other businesses back to the school. So all of those directions have to be shown. And that's what I've done here. I have an arrow going from the school to the burger place and one going from the burger place back to the school. I do the same thing for the dollar store, the pizza place, and the cafe. But there's a little bit more information in this graph. Corey also rollerblades from the pizza place to the cafe, but he does not rollerblade from the cafe to the pizza place, and that's why this cell is empty. So I have to show that he's going in only one direction between the pizza place and the cafe. Corey goes from the dollar store to the pizza place, but he also goes from the pizza place to the dollar store. So I have to show arrows showing that he does that trip in both directions. He goes from the burger place to the dollar store and from the dollar store to the burger place. So again, I need a double arrow going between the burger place and the dollar store. The directed part of my graph is finished. Now what I have to do is I have to show the waiting. And I show the waiting just by using the number of minutes. How many minutes does it take for him to do each trip? Let's start by looking at the trip between the school and the burger place. From the school, it takes him 14 minutes to get to the burger place, so I have to show that. I put a 14 here. And from the burger place, it takes him 10 minutes to get back to the school, so I need to put a 10 here. Let's go between the school and the dollar store. From the school to the dollar store, it takes 12 minutes. And from the dollar store to the school takes 16 minutes. How about from the school to the pizza place? That takes 6 minutes. And from the pizza place to the school takes 9 minutes. From the school to the cafe takes 11 minutes. And from the cafe to the school takes seven minutes. From the burger place to the dollar store takes 13 minutes. And from the dollar store to the burger place takes 19 minutes. From the dollar store to the pizza place takes five minutes. 
and from the pizza place to the dollar store also takes five minutes. I guess this shows us that the ground is very level between the pizza place and the dollar store. From the pizza place to the cafe takes 15 minutes. And we're done. We can ask ourselves, why does Corey never go from the cafe to the pizza place? Well, if it takes 15 minutes to get from the pizza place to the cafe, maybe that's because it's a very steep uphill. And maybe Corey's afraid to rollerblade downhill on that steep a hill. We can ask ourselves, why is there no connection between the burger place and the pizza place? Well, there could be all sorts of reasons why it's inconvenient for him to do that. It could have something to do with the hills or with the traffic. What's important is that all of the relationships that are represented in this table are now represented on the graph. This is how you draw a weighted and directed graph in optimization 2.